Stayallday.com. Before we start, please like and comment on this video so I can get your feedback. Also, click that subscribe button so you can get all the new content I'm dropping on this channel. And the free book, the mental handbook, physical book, work on your game university, just take care of the shipping and handling, send this right to your doorstep. Let's get started. Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. What's going on, everybody? We back with our NBA season previews, team by team. Today, we are talking about the Milwaukee Bucks. This is a team who I never really paid much attention to back when they had the, the Brandon Jennings, Monte Ellis era. This was a, a also-ran team. It was a team that had just enough talent, just enough solid players that they were going to be competitive, but also not terrible enough that they could get themselves a high draft pick. So they had to get the hell out of that situation. They made the playoffs one year. Eighth seed, first round, got their ass kicked by the Heat in the first round, being led by Brandon Jennings and that group. That was a terrible group because, again, too, too good to be – Terrible, but not terrible enough to get a good draft pick. But now they've cleaned things up. This roster that they got right here, this is a very, very interesting team. I think in the Eastern Conference, this is the most interesting team to watch, besides the Cavaliers, because they're good. But I mean, besides just in terms of being good and winning, <laughs> over other than that, <laughs> the Milwaukee Bucks are the most interesting team to watch in the Eastern Conference. Just looking at this roster overall. Let's just look at the roster that they've got. Last year, they won 33 games with Jason Kidd as the head coach. He's still the head coach. They've kept most of their the core of the team together, which I think is great with a young team when they can all grow together. Obviously, they can play together. They didn't have a lot of chemistry issues overall, at least not that I know of. If they did, y'all let me know. But let's look at who they have on this team. Are there any additions that we need to talk about? They did sign Matthew Dovadova. They got him away from the Cavs, and Dovadova's only 25. I thought he was older than that. Only 25 years old. He'll be a solid probably uh, first guard off the bench or maybe second guard off the bench for the Bucks, But I think he did that for the money. I mean, he could have stayed in Cleveland and been on a winning team, but listen, they paid him X amount of dollars. He had to go get that money, take care of himself and his family. Nothing wrong with that. The rest of this roster, I think everybody else pretty much been here. Steve Novak, Novak, he was on the team last year, I believe. And everyone else, they signed Jason Terry, who's 38 years old, but he's a solid veteran presence guy. He was teammates with Jason Kidd the year that Dallas won the championship in 2011. The head coach, Jason Kidd. So I think that's one main reason why they signed him because of his relationship with Jay Kidd and he, him being that veteran presence around a young up and coming team with a lot of talent. How many times have I talked about this? Very important to have a guy like Jason Terry. I think they would have been great getting one more guy like that, one more veteran presence guy, a big man, someone that's playing forward or center. They didn't get one, but maybe they'll get one before the season starts. So I think that would be very useful for this team with all the youth that they have. But let's talk about that youth because they got a lot of youth and it's very, again, very interesting what they have. Well, the Greek freak, Giannis Atentokounmpo, I pronounced that right. The Greek freak, 21 years old. I seen, I didn't watch any Bucks games from start to finish last year, but I seen some highlights of this dude jumping from down there to foul line, palming the ball without even touching it with both hands. He'll just be dribbling it and just palm it off the dribble and dunk on whoever he can handle the ball he was basically playing point guard for stretches of last season he was getting triple doubles on back to back to back games this dude has got some talent that there's no one else in the league who has the talent that he has he has some abilities that there's no one else in the league who has and when i think of other players who've been similar to him you would have to think of somebody like i would think maybe somebody like a t-mac but he's i don't think he's like a flat out just score points like a t-mac guy was and he's longer than t-mac I don't think anyone in the league has been as long as this guy is lengthwise with the agility and the speed and the fluidity that he has. I think in terms of his all-around game, maybe somebody more like a LeBron James. But LeBron is much more polished offensively than this guy. Even at when LeBron was 21, was more polished than the Greek freak is right now. So I wouldn't even say that's a comparison. I would think somebody like Jonathan Bender. Any of y'all even remember Jonathan Bender? Somebody like him, maybe someone along the lines of... And even then, Jonathan Bender was more of a scoring guy. Somebody like DeMar Johnson, but he's way longer than DeMar Johnson. And DeMar Johnson, again, was more of a scoring guy. I can't even think of anyone who's anything similar to what this dude does. And the first person I heard saying that this guy could possibly become a star was Bill Simmons. He was like, have you seen this Greek freak guy? Have you seen what he can do? And he was talking about him when he was like 19, like I think two years ago when he first came in the league or whatever year he came in the league. But this dude's ceiling is crazy. As long as he's allowed to flourish and do his thing he's going to do crazy things in this league but let's look at the rest of the roster because who else is on your team has a whole lot to do with how much each player is going to be able to develop because you might have a guy in your same position you might have a guy who needs the ball 
And of course, it all matters how much that guy actually gets in, gets in the game. Michael Carter Williams. Wasn't Michael Carter Williams the rookie of the year, his, his rookie year in the league, playing for a terrible team in the Sixers? He would seem like more of a stats guy. His rookie of the year award, I think, was more based on stats than anything else. And I mean, the awards, all the awards are based on stats. Let's just be honest about it. It's similar to how Tyreek Evans won rookie of the year. Michael Carter Williams won rookie of the year. Not because he was, he was so impactful on his team, but because he had great stats and he had some highlights. And nobody else was that close for him, for him to not win it. But he's only 24 years old. And I think he can be a solid player. I think MCW is a solid player. Is MCW a player you want on the court on a playoff team? Is he a, is he a starting point guard on a playoff team? My answer is no. My answer is MCW is coming off the bench on a playoff team. He could be your first guard off the bench or your second guard off the bench. But if you're going to be a, a solid playoff team that's going to actually compete in the playoffs, is MCW your starting point guard? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to say he's not, but I could be wrong about that. And maybe this year, as he develops, again, he's only 24 years old, so he got plenty of development ahead of him. He can still get better. I think he could become that guy, but as far as what I've seen so far, I don't think he's that guy. I think playing for the Sixers spoiled him mentally a little bit to the point that he's more focused on, that he may be more focused on the stats and making sure he gets his or looks good or does certain things more than actually winning the game. And that kind of that's kind of like a disease that can infect a player from early in their career. And it's hard to get it off of them when you come up playing on losing teams like that, like he did in Philadelphia. So let's see what he does moving forward. Doug Vadova we talked about. John Henson, long guy, 25 years old, 6'11", super long arms, great role player. He's a guy who's not, I don't think he's too concerned with, oh, let me make sure I get my touches, let me get my points. So I can get my stats for my next contract. I don't think he's concerned about that. He likes being on a team of guys who want to win, guys who want to play hard, guys he can have a vibe with on and off the court. So I think he's a great player to have on this roster. And again, John Henson's only 25. It seems like he's been around forever. Fine Maker. <laughs> Fine Maker is listed at 19. We're not even going to get into how old Fine Maker may or may not be. It says he's 19, so we're just going to go off that he's 19. Seven feet tall. I don't think he's going to get too much playing time on this team this year because I think this team can actually be competitive and maybe make, maybe make the playoffs. He probably won't play a lot, but it's going to be good to be on this team to compete every day against John Henson and the Greek Freak and everybody else they got on this team. But I don't think he's going to see too much playing time. He's only 19 years old. Again, just coming into the league. He has some tools. He definitely got some tools. He can block shots. He can dribble. He can shoot. He'll dunk on you. He can grab some rebounds. He got a lot of tools. But I, again, I don't think he's going to play much to actually be able to exert those tools. He's going to spend a lot of time on the bench. And all his development is going to happen in practice. <laughs> Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton is a, a, he's a star. I mean, this guy is actually the highest paid player on the team. $15 million. He's 25 years old. He's still getting better. Great shooter. One of the best shooting guards probably in the Eastern Conference. I think he can be an all-star this year. Uh, did he make all-star last year? I'm not sure. I don't think he did. But if he did, somebody correct me. But I think he has the possibility to be an all-star this upcoming season. Looking at the rest of this roster, Greg Monroe, still only 26 years old, though again, it feels like he's been in the NBA forever. Solid post presence. He can get you 15 to 20 points in the post. He needs to grab more rebounds. If he can get you 10 rebounds a game, if he's a starter, that would be a great season from Greg Monroe. Steve Novak, solid veteran guy who can hit those spot up threes. He doesn't do anything else, but he can do that. Jabari Parker. Jabari Parker's only 21. He's like, I don't know. It feels like Jabari Parker's kind of forgotten, and this guy was just Damn near the best player in college basketball a couple years ago. He's only 21, 6'8", power forward, small forward, hybrid guy. He can handle it. He can definitely put the ball in the basket. I don't know how much Jabari is going to get a chance to really, really be Jabari on this team. They just got so much talent. And the fact of the matter is the Greek freak is better than Jabari Parker. He just has more talent. He has more talent than Jabari Parker, and I think he can affect the game in more ways then actually, I know he can affect the game more ways than anybody else on his team, period, the Greek freak. And him and Jabari both being 21, so they could either grow together or that could cause one of them to need to have to go. And if one of them has to go, it'll definitely be Jabari Parker. It won't be the Greek freak. So Jabari, I think, has the ability. And the Greek freak, is a, he will pass the ball. He's not a guy who needs to get his points. He will pass the ball. So I think that can work. But again, that depends on how Coach Jason Kidd makes this work. Miles Plumlee. Miles Plumley is, wait, I get the Plumleys mixed up. I don't know which Plumley is this. All right, so you got Marshall Plumley, Miles Plumley, and Mason Plumley. Which one is the one, wait, I can look at their pictures. I can tell by their faces. 
there's one who's I think he plays for the Portland Trailblazers. And I may be wrong about this. All right, this is Miles Plum. Okay, so this is the uh, he's been in the league for a year. Okay, so this is the second best Plum. I think Marshall is the one who's the youngest who hasn't really proved anything yet, and Mason is the best one. Mason Plum is the best Plum. I think I got that right. He's the one who was playing for. I think he was playing for Brooklyn. He might still is he still in Brooklyn, or he got traded to Portland? One of those. Mason Plumlee is the best one. I do know that for a fact. Miles Plumlee is the second best one. He'll be okay. I don't think he's going to play too much on this team. Mirza Toledovich, we know he can hit. We can knock down some shots. He was coached by Jason Kidd in Brooklyn. I don't think he plays too much. Jason Terry, we talked about. So overall, looking at this roster, a lot of young guys, a lot of guys in their early to mid twenties. Damn near nobody over 26 years old. Miles Plumlee is 28. Everybody else, everybody else is under 28. 28 is, you got 30 in Togadovic, you got 38 in Jason Terry, and 33 Steve Novak. Everybody else is under 25. This is a great young roster up and coming that the Milwaukee Bucks have. Jason Kidd has proved to be a actually pretty good coach. I didn't think Jason Kidd was that great of a coach when he was coaching. Is he coaching the Knicks or the Nets? When he was coaching the Nets, I didn't think Jason Kidd was that great of a coach. And he lost kind of like a power struggle in Brooklyn. It wasn't really about what happened on the court. It was really with the front office. But he's proven to actually be a pretty good coach. I think this team can make the playoffs. This team can make the playoffs as long as they continue to gel as a unit. They can't have any factions on the team. You can't have anybody mad because they ain't getting the ball or mad because they're not getting enough press or mad because they're not playing enough. As long as none of that happens, this team can make the playoffs this year as long as they stay healthy. I think Michael Carter-Williams' role needs to diminish on this team. I think the Greek Freak should be the main ball handler on this team. I think he should be the main ball handler. They should be running the offense through him. He needs to make sure he gets the ball to Jabari Parker and Chris Middleton. Those are the guys who are really going to be putting the ball in the basket. MCW can be the change of pace guy who comes off the bench. Jason Terry will... Uh, what's the word? Mentor these young guys. Greg Monroe needs to hold down the paint and do something in the paint. Thon Maker needs to sit on the bench and learn. Who else is on this team? And that's pretty much it. Purchase I think. And John Henson. Today. John Henson's a solid role player. Grab your rebounds, block some shots, get a couple dunks every game, hit a couple 15 foot jumpers, do your thing. And Jason Kidd just keeps steering the ship. I think this is a playoff team as long as everything goes through the Greek Freak. I think the Greek Freak can average, I think he can give you an 18. Nine rebounds and eight assists. I think he could do something like that for a season if they run the offense through him for the season and they keep MCW's ass off the court. I really think the offense should run because MCW is he's good when he's running the offense. But Giannis is way better than MCW, so MCW needs to be on the bench. Offense running through Giannis. Giannis should not be coming off the ball. It should be going through him, and that way they can make the playoffs. And who knows how that even is even going to work out? Because nobody has seen a guy like Giannis out here before. So, Bucks fans, y'all got something to be excited for. But how many Bucks fans are actually out there? How many of y'all are actually Bucks fans? Well, you was cheering for the Bucks when Brandon Jennings and Monte Ellis was the guards, and you kept cheering all the way through. Now, if there's any of you out there, I want to know. And I need some proof. Don't just say that you was doing it. I need some proof. Prove it somehow, some way that you've been a Bucks fan since back then. Because I don't think anybody is. I think we all are fans of certain players, but I, the fan of a, the Bucks as a team, I don't think anybody. But if you want to become a Bucks fan, this is the year to do it. They can make the playoffs. I think they can have a better record than the Knicks with the team that they have this year. I think, can they win a playoff series? Probably not. I don't think they can win a playoff series. Not with this young of a roster. I think they will lose in the playoffs in the first round. But it will be definitely huge for them to make the playoffs and win, a play, win at least one game in the first round. Do that. And as long as they avoid the eighth seed and don't have to play the Cavs, they will win a game. Maybe they can win two against any other team in the East. There ain't no other team in the East is unstoppable. The Cavs are the only team that's unstoppable. The rest of them, no. So anyway, that's it for the Milwaukee Bucks. Who are we going to talk about next? Let's talk about that. Next team we are going to cover will be the Denver Nuggets, who also won 33 games last year. I'm going to have to take a look at their roster because I don't even know who the hell plays for the Nuggets. But everybody, that's my feedback. That's my opinion on the 2017 Milwaukee Bucks. I want to know what you think. Leave it down there in the comments, and I'll see you all tomorrow with the next preview. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.